Good afternoon. You're watching Men's Health TV. I'm Glenn Poole of the Australian Men's Health Forum, and this is the Bloke's Healthy Lunchbox. On today's program, we're talking men's mental health, and we've got two fantastic blokes to start that conversation with you. In about half an hour, we'll be meeting Stephen Gamble from The Man Anchor, who does an amazing talk called Let's Talk. So you'll be finding out all about that in about 30 minutes. But first, we've got Anthony Hart. Anthony's created a fantastic program called the Life Back Tracker. And he's going to be taking you through that program and explain to you the four steps that can keep you mentally healthy. Anthony, thanks for being here. Excellent, Glenn. And thank you very much for having me. And uh, I've, I've had a very... Um, confronting experience with mental health and well-being, and, and I think out of that, I, through using it for five or six years, I put together four really simple steps that I used from 2003 to 2008. I made a serious attempt on my life in 2003, and it was over five years of recovery, uh, physically, mentally, uh, that I followed four really simple steps that got me in a much better spot. And it was after multiple friends asking me about what I did to get myself back, uh, I started to document down the process. I put it into a booklet and now it's an app. So I'm gonna share screen, Glenn. And um, I'm, okay. a I'm a level two screen <laughs> sharer. Well, we'll hand, over, we'll hand over to you, Anthony, and uh, leave, uh, leave the viewers in your very good hands. So, can someone just confirm that they can see the first screen? Got it. And we've Excellent. got you loud and clear. <clears throat> Great. So I came up with, and I've got a really, my best friend is a graphic designer in uh, Sydney, and he's now in Brisbane. So Rob Van Drill came up with a real catchy, uh, sporty type of logo, and we called it Life Back Tracker. And we spent weeks and weeks and weeks working at a tagline, and we made it four steps to better, it was four steps to better mental health. But then as I'm so passionate about actually tre treating a health issue, whether it's physical or mental, it's gotta be treated the same way. You've gotta get medical help and, and do something to get yourself better. We came up with the word, we used the word mind health. So the first step to better mind health is talking. 55 or 60% of people we know who lose their life or die by suicide hadn't spoken to anyone medically to get a recovery plan put in place. And so that is our first step to better mind health. There are three things. Now, I incurred a, an acquired brain injury when I had my suicide attempt. And so everything has to be, uh, keep it simple, Simon, or keep it simple, stupid. And so three things with talking. Number one, friend connect. And so I really, we worked through over two workshops, how to actually go through these four steps. But in short, friend connect is, is to con look in your network and find someone that typically, from my experience over 16 years, don't choose someone who is in your inner circle that you see two or three times a week, or is your wife or one of your loving parents, choose generally like an older friend who is outside of your network. Uh, mine are generally really older friends. Rob Francis, for example, is, is my kind of go-to friend. We've been friends since we were two. Now, he lives at Millicent. He's a school teacher and we've had different paths in the world. But I can ring him now when I've got challenges that I'm thinking about and it's, it's quarantined down there. He, he'll always buddy sync with me, and that's step number two is to buddy up. Now, he will buddy up and genuinely want to see me work through the challenge. And the third step is medical help. Now, immediately go straight to your GP and be honest and open with how you're feeling. When I came back from England, in 2003 back to Adelaide, I struggled to fit, fit back in. And in March 2003, over four months or, or five months, I got sicker and sicker and sicker. The 
problem what, that I did is that I, I took six months to get to the doctor. And by the time I got there, I was critically ill and very, very depressed and anxious. Now, if you go early, uh, like anything, they can get onto it quicker and you can get a path back to wellness. So friend connect, buddy sync, and see your GP. Now, the second step, uh, and I'm not a good swimmer, my left arm was dislodged and it has no function. So I, I do one arm swimming, which is not uh, pretty. And I have incredible tangles with the lane ropes. But during my recovery, I got thrown into the swimming pool and I just did lap after lap after lap. And I eventually got my rudder and my direction sorted out and I do swim. So I do 50 laps per session, uh, 50 meters. So two and, I aim for two and a half Ks. It does take me an hour. Um, but with an acquired brain injury and breaks throughout the day, I'm able to work a nine hour day. And so exercise is the most important thing. Now, it, it is still good to go for a walk and do low intensity stuff, but medically, and I was told this before my accident, you've got to get your heart rate up into a safe high cardio level 35 or 40 minutes is when the optimum type of reproduction of the chemicals that make us feel happy start to really kick in. And so I always go for at least 35, 40 minutes. You've got to choose something that you love doing. And if you can try and do it four or five times a week, now that's a lot, I have to because of my extensive injuries, but two or three times a week as a start and lock it into your schedule. Uh, the third step, which it's not the most popular, is alcohol and recreational drugs. Now, if you're going through any challenge, and whether it be uh, stress, anxiety, depression, or even just the mild stages, parking and resting alcohol at the start makes a huge difference. So I call it the three R's, rest, reduce, or remove it. And the... I've never taken recreational drugs, but drugs, absolutely zero. Getting back into a better spot is far easier to achieve. So in, in the product that I'm about to show you, which you can download for free, you actually track each of these things every day. Uh, the third step, now we all know that sleep is almost like the first sign that goes when you come across someone who isn't doing that great. And I always ask, how are you sleeping? And sleep, as we know, becomes intermittent. You struggle to get off to sleep or you wake up at three or four o'clock. Now, for sleep, by certainly by exercising and, and thrashing yourself out with exercise, you'll be tired, you'll be far more tired. But prepare two hours before bed. I saw a clinical psychiatrist 103 times from 2003 to 2008. And the number one thing before any of the challenges were dealt with was that he had to get me up to at least seven hours sleep every night. Every night. Now we did that through medication and through exercise, but getting yourself into a good consistent pattern is vital. He gave me a two hour rule, meaning that within two hours of going to sleep, everything had to be shut off. Uh, no work, no computers, no phones, um, kind of dim the lights down a little bit and maybe watch a bit of casual TV, play with your kids, that type of thing. Really switch off um, and avoid drinking four or five coffees and energy drinks in the afternoon. So remove those stimulants from your life. Um, now, it, won, it got put forward to SA Health three years ago and it won the startup of the year for the Office of the Premier and Cabinet. Uh, we then went on a mission to get it up into an app. And so the app has to be free for anyone, anywhere, anytime. So this has been my number one foundation in our, we're now a social good scalable organization, but the app is free for anyone, anywhere, anytime. There's, there's actually no login. There's no username, password, and that's deliberate because as we know, most people just don't even want to talk about this stuff. and. The last thing they want to do is give out their details through the internet or be tracked through an employer uh, who 
I introduced this app to. So uh, there are some downsides to that and we're working through those, but if you lose your phone, if you delete your data, it's kind of gone. There's no backup system, but it's done. So there's, there's that absolute trust, there's security. There's no credit card even to link up to get the app. So it's commercially, I've always sold and bought and sold things. It's the worst product in the world you've ever designed because it will potentially bankrupt you. <laughs> but that rule has to always be kept. Um, I've now I've lost track of time a bit, Glenn. How are we going time wise? Have I got five minutes left? I'll take that as a yes. Um, uh, now this one pager is what I'm happy to email out to people and it's a Everything we do is free. Has to be, I have to give as much as I can out free because then more people will use it. This is a life back action plan. And I copied this from my brother who bought, he bought a farm in my Ponga, South Australia about eight years ago. And when he first got the keys to the farm, I saw him fill out this bushfire exit plan. And I kind of asked him about what he has to fill out. And it's like, as we know, it's a plan when the, when the fire comes, you need to know what exit to go out of, who to phone, what procedures you need to do to get out safely. And so I thought, that's brilliant. I'm, I'm going to copy that and make up an exit plan or a, a mind health plan for you before you get into a bad spot. So number two, number one is that you write down your two friends now and give it a really deep thought as to who are those people that at, at the worst spot in your life, if you're gonna ring anyone, because it's confronting who would it be, you write it down. Number two, you write down what exercise thing you're actually gonna to commit to try and do. The third bit is alcohol. And in there, and it's, is it telling a white lie? Yes, it probably is, but write down what your reason, your your valid reason for not drinking is before you go out and try and socialize. I, I struggled to get back into life with my friends post my accident. And so my doctor, my psychiatrist said to me, we're going to give you a lie to say that every three months, and he did actually give me a blood test because I was on heavy doses of sodium, uh, sodium valproate for my head. Uh, I needed a blood test and alcohol put all the levels out. So have your reason, whether you've put five or six kilos on, which I have over, over COVID-19, whatever it is, be confident when you go out, tell your mates proudly, guys, I'm not drinking. Happy to get around the beers. I'm having three or six months off. In my, my experience of speaking to 18,000 people is, it's better off that you just don't say I'm having a really bad period with depression and anxiety. Now, not that we should, be afraid of talking about how we're feeling, but it's just easier sometimes to confide in two or three people to guide you through this and get through that path. So, um, look, there's there's a lot of other stuff that I um, I talk about, but the guts of um, of the life back tracker is, is is to track those four things. It's available free from both of the stores, the Google and the Apple Store, uh, and it's life back one word and the second word is tracker and uh, so I'd, look, I'd love everybody to download it i don't get to see for, unfortunately i don't get to see who downloads it um, there are ways to send me a message and i get lots of messages come through so um that wraps up my presentation and i i didn't look at the time glenn so i'm having a guess that's near my 20 minutes you you got Space to go, so we've still got a bit of time to find out a bit about the stuff you've been up to, Anthony. So, yes. oh, so, I mean, so, so there's four things that I effectively do. I, I started this path, I left my family business two years ago. So, we have a, a, a chain of pet stores in South Australia called Pet Stock, um, and they're around the country. So, we have the South Australian stores, and then I, I got thrown into this prize with the state government. I wasn't even planning on doing I was doing talks everywhere for, for free. You know, I just loved doing it. And, uh, and then I got that social uh, confirmation that this tool is a really good tool. And hence, I now do speaking. I do um, Save Our Mates is our brand for our federal roadshows we do through um, a P 
PHN network around the country. Uh, we've got products um, and we do workshop. We do corporate workshops we roll out. We're currently working with Department of Transport in South Australia. Uh, I, did a, I did four um, live stream workshops to the Department of Transport Victoria. So I, I love, it's not a job. I absolutely love what I do every day. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the stuff I do. That's great. So, I mean, one of the things that I've seen really uh, take off of yours, which is obviously um, one of the ways that I think you're getting this great app out there is the Saver Mates Roadshow. So for those who don't know what a Saver Mates Roadshow is, t- take a couple of minutes to paint the picture for us. What, what's a, what on earth is a Saver Mate Roadshow? So what does it look like? The, the, the federal government came to me um, one of my connections, Jay Kerno from SA Country PHN, had seen in my business that I, I get Dr. Harry down and we do a road show of Dr. Harry to our eight stores. And so she said, look, how about if you do that, but you, you coordinate some lived experience speakers, Joe Williams, uh, Jeremy Forbes. Um, these are the speakers I've engaged. And we map out. So, for example, the first one was South Australia. We did like we cut out a chunk of the state and we did a logo and it had the three legs. So we've got the Air Peninsula, York Peninsula, and we've got Fleuria. And so we picked the biggest main towns in that area and we jump in a car and over six nights with the two speakers in the back seat, I, we drive to, Port, for example, Port Augusta, Port Piri, Wyala, Port Lincoln, uh, Maitland, and we do one 7 p.m. community, it's called a community wellbeing night, where we do a free event at a major centre in each of those towns. And the local town promotes it, and we get between 50 and 100 people to come along. Now, the first one was out of the, was out of the men's budget nationally. So I got um, Jeremy Forbes, an incredible speaker. He, he, him and I have a great time. I've used him three times. Joe Williams, uh, is the most powerful speaker I've heard. He came on one of our tours. And the last tour we did around the Riverland. So Riverland in South Australia is Renmark, Berry, Loxton, Barmer. Uh, we had a fe- we had some female speakers as well. Right. And so I, I'm, I might imagine this if you can with my my odd accent. Imagine I'm a, a, a bloke in, I don't know, Wyala or Point Perio. I'm randomly picking names from South Australia, the Air Peninsula. Um, and uh, I see this poster and I go, oh, I'm not doing anything on Tuesday night. I might as well go and have a look at that. What's the experience like for a bloke? And is it, is it mostly yeah. bloke for those events? Uh, and well, what's the experience yeah. like for a bloke? What's, well, what's the, the bloke get? Oh, well, uh, the first one was mainly blokes. The second one was female and bloke. Um, the experience is that the, the talks go for half hour. So there are two speakers. There's a, maybe mainly in footy clubs or community centres. There's a barbecue half hour before. So free chopped sausages, and um, we've had kangaroo. That's now you now you talk now you're talking my language. Now I <laughs> now, now I understand. Okay, so you get you get me in with offer of, of, of a free sausage, free, free food, free drink. We don't do alcohol, and then so that's half hour prior, and then we do the talks for thirty minutes. So I'm up for fifteen twenty. Joe Williams is up for fifteen or twenty minutes, and then we have a Q and A open Q and A session. Right. Can sometimes go for a half hour, an hour. Yeah. Um, and we always have a, a, a social worker counsellor in the room if there's anything that our talks uh, triggered emotions, that there's counsellors there on the night. Yeah. And it's just a really good night. Everyone just chats about. We normalise a health issue that really shouldn't be hush hushed. You know, I, oh. I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have died by what was really bad anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, right. So what's, what, what, what comes up then for the blokes? What's, what's the kind of questions that people, people ask? Oh, look, we get lots of questions, you know, after you, like we know, if you're vulnerable in sharing your story, well then you start getting hand after hand saying, yep, I went through that two years ago, or I'm going through it now. Um, how, how do you work through the medical process? Tell me about GPs and, oh, I, I don't like medication. You've talked about medication really working for you, and I'm a I'm a real advocate for I'm on an, an anti-anxiety medication. Just like if you're a diabetic and you have to take 
and insulin hit, you know, and, and so properly managed. So I think it's a good education for people can, people can ask questions about people who have gone through this over years and years and how they've managed it. So they kind of find it almost better than seeing a doctor, I think, sometimes because they're getting the patient experience. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. I, 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 um, I went around the country doing a bit of a road show about three, four years ago. I mean, and it was more about um, bringing together workers rather than the general public. Um, and we went to every state and territory as we were traveling around in, 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 in the motorhome. And, my, and it was all focused on, on conversations about male suicide. Um, and what I believed when I set off was that there was this major issue, you know, eight people a day dying by suicide, six blokes, two women. Um, and the issue that I thought I was going out to resolve was that people didn't care, right? It was like, there's this big issue. There's three times as many blokes dying as women, six blokes a day are dying. It's one every four hours. People don't care. I need to get, I need to get people to care. That was my, my belief. Oh, okay. And what I found, and it's good to have your, prejudices challenged and your biases challenged by actually testing it rather than just sitting on your own and having an opinion and actually going to talk with people and find out what people think rather than telling people what they think right so um so I, I, what i started to find out was man people care deeply about this this issue that these are these aren't just statistics these are people's sons and brothers and and, and uncles and, and workmates and uh, and old schoolmates and, uh, you know, local characters and all sorts of blokes. And there's hardly a person or a family or a street in the country that hasn't been touched by this issue in some way. And what I found was that it wasn't that people didn't care. Mostly it was that they didn't know what to do. So they felt helpless. And so they, so actually making the conversation normal and also giving, making people realize this is not just a job for the Sykes and it's not just a job for the Pollies. This is actually, it's a whole of community job that we can all be involved in at some level, which doesn't mean to say we have to start operating like amateur psychologists, but we just need some basic skills and understanding about how to look after and take care of each other. And this whole thing about, you know, well, the, issue, the trouble is that blokes don't talk or blokes don't get help. The other thing that I've realized, I mean, I knew working with men for years that blokes talk and blokes, blokes get help, but never really leaned into the suicide conversation. But the moment I started going out there talking about male suicide, whether it was on social media or at events, or I might go to like, you know, big events at men's sheds and stuff like that, blokes of all backgrounds will, will come up. To, every time you go, I go out and talk about this issue, I can guarantee some bloke will come up and tell me his, his tell me his story. Either that he has suicided, he's got someone he's concerned about, he's been, you know, thinking about it recently, and that can be like an Uber driver that I've only known for five minutes. You know, it's yeah. like yeah. when people are ready to talk about this, they really want to talk about this if they're given the opportunity. And it's like I, I guess I, I imagine that you get similar experiences if you're taking the conversation out into lots of different communities. Oh, we do, and sometimes, so we, we deliberately keep it short, uh, half an hour, 35 minutes, speakers go off, but uh, we then get a, a moderator, generally the mayor comes up and says, right, now, these guys are going to open questions up here now. Now, sometimes we stop the questions after an hour, officially, just to end the event, but then we stay at the centre there, sometimes till 11.30, 12 o'clock, and just chat. Now, um, that, that's the, mate, that's the, big part about it and you know 17 years ago without going into details I, you know I was I was a scared little boy when I was 28 going to the GP I just was terrified and I didn't know what to do and I was just so scared about all the uh, psychiatrists and and the medical process just and so having that community angle to it um, you know a problem shared to problem halved and we all know that, you know, if I tell you right now that, so one of my triggers is my foot. I, I broke most of my body and my foot is one of my triggers. And I take two, pan, uh, I take medication every four hours for it. Now, uh, I've got to take my medication the next half an hour. If not, I start to get cranky and grumpy. Now I tell people that 
and they see it in my face. And so if you talk about this stuff, it gets sorted out. Yeah. Um, this has been really inspiring, Anthony, and I'm also not committed to you getting cranky and grumpy, so I guess we better, <laughs> we better use that as an... And then that's my 20 minutes gone, so cut me off now. That's great. So look, uh, if people, uh, that's been really interesting, but to get a, you know, a deeper insight into how your, uh, your, your life back tracker works, but also for people to hear a bit about those road shows that you've been doing with Saber Mates. Um, if people are watching this, you blokes are watching this and they're liking, you know, they're liking what you put down and they want to pick more of it up. Um, what's the call to action? Where can they go to get more information? Um, so they can go to, we've actually got four websites at the moment. Uh, uh, Lifebacktracker, lifebacktracker.com is our, that's our product and that website. Um, for our Save Our Mates community roadshows, we actually just type in Save Our Mates .com.au uh, and you can see all the roadshows we've done and our, our, my, our, my organisation is called Heart Wellbeing H-A-R-T Wellbeing Yeah and, and so, do you want to put in a plug for the pet store as well? Absolutely I mean that's it's, it's part of my family business so pet, pet stock is part of your family so it's a national retail group there's 151 stores in the country and we're all family, we actually are still family owned individually or our head office. So if you're in Melbourne, there's about 96 stores, but yeah, pets are, pets are very important now in these COVID-19 periods and we've, we're having very busy periods in stores. And some really interesting work on how, so, uh, how pets, uh, so there's been some really interesting research on how pets can be a protective factor against uh, suicide and mental health issues, uh, particularly for blokes. So uh, that's maybe a conversation for another day that you could come along and sponsor for us. Absolutely. Yeah, no, happy to do that. Now, get, cut me off now. Yeah, that's it. You're gone. Go and take your Panadol. <laughs> and um, thanks, thanks for being here, Anthony. Really appreciate it. And if we can okay. take, if we just take one message from, from that about this serious issue, it's, we just need to talk about it. Um, and by way of magical link, our next guest, Stephen Gamble from Mananka, is going to provide a talk called Let's Talk. Stephen, over to you. Just need to unmute yourself. There we go. There we go. Um, thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Anthony. Wow. Now, that was awesome. That was really awesome. And thank you, Anthony, for that. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I think, you know, one of the greatest things about men's health and, and mental health is sharing lived experience. And your story really moved me. Um, I'm in a privileged position where I have many conversations about mental health and lived experience. And, and those little bits of experience you hear from other people can really engage and, and promote people to be able to reach out to get further support. So thank you for all the wonderful work you do, Anthony, uh, and your beautiful app. It looks fantastic. And please, next time you're in Sydney, um, I want to come along um, to, to one of the lived experience talks. Um, so I'm really honoured to be here today. Um, and today I'll be uh, introducing um, uh, one of our programs, an abridged version of one of our programs called Let's Talk, which is, runs for about an hour usually, but we're going to try to fit it into 30 minutes, 28 minutes if possible. Um, and um, what it is, it's a really relaxed look at mental health. Um, Man Anchor is an organisation that provides education and awareness programs, and we're about you know, giving the community tools to be able to, one, have real positive conversations around mental health, but also support their own well-being and the well-being of the people around them. So uh, we have our Let's Talk program. We have our Communicating with Care program, which is a four-hour program, which is designed to give uh, participants uh, effective tools to be able to support their own well-being um, and communication skills. And uh, then we have um, uh, the mental health first aid program, which a lot of Australians know about, um, and we, we think it's a fantastic program, which we deliver um, with a range of facilitators. So today I'm gonna to introduce you to our Let's Talk program, which is a really relaxed look at mental health 
and and how we can best support our mental health. Excuse me. Um, so I'll just bring that up to there if I could. Sorry, I'll just drop it back. So I thought I was an expert on Zoom, but maybe things are going a bit astray at the moment. So look, as I said, Mental Health First, um, uh, the Mental Health Let's Talk workshop is a really relaxed look at mental health. And it's about just giving individuals a light bulb moment. Um, just like um, Anthony was saying before, you know, we all have some experience with mental health and each of us have a different perception on mental health and outlook on mental health and a different knowledge range. But one thing that is true, there's three kinds of people, what I like to say anyway. There's the person that's lived experience, uh, mental health disorder. It's some, there's also the person that has um, supported someone living with a mental health disorder or someone that just hasn't realised that they have a friend or family member that has a mental health disorder. So this, what this program is about is, is about educating a little bit more um, about mental health, um, giving individuals a light bulb moment that they may be able to call on um, in the future. And we run these for community groups, sporting clubs, small and large business, but it's a great way to get the conversation started. So I'll kick it off. So firstly, I'd like to um, create a safe space. And what I'd like to do is acknowledge anyone who has lived experience with a mental health disorder, supported a loved one with a mental health disorder, or who has been touched by suicide. Because we will be talking about mental health and suicide, it can be triggering for some members of the community. If you do feel triggered by this, please reach out to your support network or to your um, uh, local health professional. So how I like to start it is build the story around mental health um, because for some of us we know these things and uh, these um, statistics and for others we don't but I think it's important that we continue to talk about them because it adds the, it adds the gravity to what mental health looks like in Australia. So here's some statistics that some of you may know or may not know. One in five Australians aged between 16 and 85 will experience a common mental illness in the 12 month period. 20% of Australians. One in eight males will experience depression. One in five will experience anxiety in a 12-month period. Now, that's pretty unbelievable when you think about the average football team. So on the average football team, you'll have at least one person potentially living with um, a depression. Um, then we look at the, the female side of the spectrum with one in five females will experience depression. Uh, and one in three will experience anxiety over a 12-month period. Now, from my point of view, I think the male and female figures are a lot closer than those, um, just from what I've been able to engage from uh, my work with the community. But one of the shocking facts is only 35% of people living with a mental health disorder seek professional support. 35%. Now, the way we can increase that as a community is by having real positive conversations and communication and normalising the conversation around mental health, just like um, Glenn and uh, uh, I'm sorry, Anthony were talking about earlier. Um, suicide, it is the leading cause of death in uh, males aged between 15 and 44. Now, I've been lucky enough to run workshops many, many times over the last few years, and still every time I say, that um, statistic, I still get goosebumps. It still gives me goosebumps. The leading cause of death in males aged between 15 and 44. If you're sitting face to face or via Zoom and we could have interaction, I'd usually ask, you know, what would you think would be the leading cause of death in males aged between 15 and 44? And not often do they say suicide. So for something that, you know, as a community, we can prevent um, to a certain extent, um, through simple communication and acknowledgement of mental health, um, you know, I think it's really important. But we have this figure here, 3,046. Now, who, many people listening today will have different varied experience with mental health and knowledge base, but I wonder what you think that number is. Well, 3,046 is the number of Australians that took their own life in uh, 2018. Uh, it is shocking. That's 3,046 Australians that thought suicide was their only option. That's 3,046 Australian families that lost a loved one. So that's why I'm so passionate. That's why Anthony is so passionate. And, um, and that's why Glenn and the Australian Men's Health Forum is so passionate about mental health. We want to reduce that 
for males and females. But unfortunately, 75% of all suicides in Australia are males. So we want to reduce that. We want to reduce that 3,046 figure down and we want to reduce the rate of male suicide as well. But it's what I'd like to talk about just quickly and briefly is, you know, especially with COVID and living through COVID at the moment, there's a lot more stress, which is understandable, and low levels of anxiety within the community. But, you know, stress is a normal part of life. But what isn't, you know, what isn't normal is when the stress starts to become to interfere with our daily living. And that's when it becomes distress. And that's when we need to look at our coping mechanisms and also look at probably reaching out for support. Um, and then when we look at crisis, which is a really unique response to um, a situation in life, a life experience, when you can't emotionally and physically cope. Um, with the situation, maybe one that I see commonly with the men I talk to is relationship breakdowns, um, job loss and financial um, financial um, uh, fallout or uh, uh, um, job uh, uh, business um, restructuring. Um, you know, we, when we get to a point of crisis, we definitely need to look at talking to someone and reaching out. Um, when we look at the situation now with COVID, um, you know, there's been modelling by um, the Brain and Mind Institute that there could be a 25% increase in suicide um, if the unemployment rate was to reach higher than 10, 11%. Currently, we're at about 5.2%. But if it was to reach that, a 25% increase on that 3,046 number. You know, together, we need to understand that um, if we do get, to, if we are distressed. It's important that we have proper coping mechanisms and if we are in crisis, it's important that we do have coping mechanisms and do reach out for support. Sorry, my lunch is just catching up with me. Um, but like most medical illnesses, early intervention is key. But like other medical illnesses, you know, there's three platforms we can look at and we'll unpack those now. Prevention, early intervention and treatment. Um, so we'll have a look at prevention. Now, Prevention, mental health, it's the core of us being well. Um, everyone has mental health. Uh, we all have mental health, male and female. It doesn't matter if you're um, uh, 10 years old or 80 years old. We all live on a mental health spectrum, just like a physical spectrum. On one side, we have good physical health and we have poor physical health. We have that with our mental health. We have good mental health and we have poor mental health. And it's key that we practice prevention just like we would for our physical health. So number one, during good times and bad times, communication is key. Staying connected with your friends and family, uh, having real honest, transparent conversations, and especially around COVID now about you know the, the fallout financially potential or the uncertainty around it. Um, it's important that we have these transparent conversations because it's a really good barometer to see how we're tracking. But it also creates opportunity for us to be able to reach out to someone or someone to reach out to us. So just like Anthony was saying, communication is key. Exercise goes hand in hand with mental health, so our physical health goes hand in hand. Um, it's a beautiful way to relieve tension, to stop and reset. Um, when you do a little bit of exercise, a simple little bit of exercise from anything from a, a 20 minute walk or a 15 minute run, um, a swim, uh, as Anthony was saying, Anything to be able to get the body working, get the mind working, they work together, they power each other. Um, a diet is always important. Eat a healthy, balanced diet. As Anthony said as well, you need to address your alcohol intake. Unfortunately, during COVID, we've been looking at um, you know a 70% increase in alcohol consumption during, um, uh, during isolation, and 23% of people reporting that they were drink, they're drinking more to cope with the stress-related um, issues as a coping mechanism during COVID. So we need to be very mindful. Look, I love a drink. I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I do love a drink, but during COVID, I went the other way because I was really mindful of my mental health. Um, and I believe truly in my heart of hearts that the silver lining of COVID will be that we are a little bit, all a bit more aware of our well-being and how important it is to stay on the good side of the spectrum.
you know, live in news feeds. It's really important that we stay connected, especially if you're a business owner um, or a small business owner, you know, with JobKeeper and whatnot, or if you're unemployed um, from the fallout. Um, so, but it's really important that we limit the amount of negative news feeds that we have because it can give a, leave a negative effect on our well-being and on our family's well-being. I'm uh, the proud father of uh, two eight-year-old boys and a 14, 15 week year old, you've got a COVID baby. But I've noticed in my two eight-year-old boys, just from us watching the news, what they've picked up from it, and the low levels of anxiety that they feel around, you know, um, the shutdown and whatnot. Um, another one is mindfulness. Now, I talk to many, many men from all different walks of life. I talk to butchers, bakers, builders, bankers, barristers, um, but, Mindfulness is not for the hippies. Mindfulness is for everyone, okay? Um, professional sportsmen use it, professional um, uh, uh, leading businessmen use it, entertainers, um, leading um, high achievers use uh, mindfulness exercises, including meditation, breathing exercises, and, um, and um, yoga and so on. I, I ask you all just to have a look at it. Try a little bit of everything. Um, and find something that really works for you because there will be something out there when it comes to mindfulness that really will support your well-being. Um, next, we have early intervention, okay? Early intervention is key. If you are becoming unwell, you do notice signs in yourself or in someone else that they're becoming unwell, it's really important that we grab hold of it. Just like if we start to see a cold coming on or another medical illness, um, uh, it's important that we nip it in the butt because when we nip it in the butt, we can come well sooner. Um, so knowing, uh, knowing, knowing the science is key. I've been quoted many times in saying that knowing the signs of a mental health condition, the signs and symptoms, is just as important as knowing resuscitation, okay? You don't use resuscitation every day, um, and you probably won't use these skills every day of knowing these signs, but if you do notice something and a change, a subtle change in someone, you know, it may be the key and the catalyst for you reaching out to give support. And we'll unpack that a little bit after, uh, after this slide. Uh, reaching out, if you do notice a change in yourself, it's really important that you reach out. And I'm here to tell you that you will not be turned away. Whoever you reach out to, be it your uh, friends or family, or your local GP, they will be there to support you, okay? Um, please don't be afraid to reach out. On the other side of the spectrum, please don't be afraid to reach out to give support as well. Your support, you giving support, you being there for someone can literally change someone's world or potentially even save their life. You don't need to be a GP. You don't need to have a medical degree. You just need to have a heart, have empathy, like I'm sure you all do already. Um, but it is then again important that we know those signs. If you do know someone's, if someone's becoming unwell, if you notice signs that you may be becoming unwell, there's a lot of resources out there to help you online and so on. But also a really simple way to start it is by seeking support from your local GP. So look, we'll unpack some of the triggers, some of the potential triggers. And you know, for men, we were talking on Men's, Men's Health Week, we like a bit of a roadmap sometimes. Sometimes we don't like to follow the roadmap. But if we have a better understanding of some of the triggers and some of the signs and symptoms, you know, we can, we can break it down a little bit easier. So here's a couple of some of the more common triggers that someone may be living through a mental health crisis or becoming unwell. Um, stress, loss of a loved one, traumatic event, relationship breakdown. For me, in the work that I do with men, um, age between um, 16 and 60, I see, you know, relationship breakdowns being one of the one of the higher uh, triggers for a mental health um, a condition or becoming unwell. Um, alcohol and drug abuse, trauma, bu bullying and intimidation, social pressures and expectations, financial expectations, workplace pressures, personally unrealistic expectations. Now, if we look at these in society today, and it's one of my bugbears, and I I go on my high horse about it. For Christ, let's live a life that's sustainable. Stop living life for the Joneses. We're, we're individuals who want to live life so that we can be happy. And what really frustrates is me when I see people living life beyond their means or being, uh, living an unsustainable life to keep up with the Joneses. Let the Joneses live their life. You live your life so that you're happy. You know, live your sustainable life. 
And sorry, there's my rant for the day. Um, uh, discrimination based on sexuality or gender identification, domestic violence, prenatal loss, pregnancy, and menopause. So when we talk about mental health, you know, there's a couple of things that are, are noticeable when you notice um, someone becoming unwell, and it usually affects people's behaviours, feelings, and thoughts, and then physical um, symptoms and signs. So here's some common behaviours, feelings, and phys uh, physical symptoms. Withdrawn, not being able to complete task, or uh, not being able to complete task, or not lying on alcohol and drugs, lack of concentration, abstaining from social events, some of the feelings, overwhelmed, gu guilty, irritable, frustrated, low in confidence, indecisive, uh, disappointed, miserable, and sad, and some of the physical symptoms and signs that you may see in someone. Um, remembering that the the symptoms are something that someone feels, and the signs are something that you see in someone. Um, tired all the time, sick and run down, headache and muscle pain, churning stomach, loss or change in appetite and significant weight gain or loss. So I know, I wish everyone had this in their lunchroom, I wish everyone in had this on their family notice board so that we became more aware of it because these can really change someone's life. So if we go back a slide, we know someone in our life has gone through one of these traumatic events, triggering events. Um, you know, we look at COVID, maybe it's um, redundancy, um, job loss, and then you know, start to notice that they're, you know, they've been withdrawn, um, they're relying on alcohol and drugs more often, you know, they're low in confidence and, and a little bit irritable, and you start to notice some physical signs, maybe um, uh, loss or change in appetite, a significant weight gain or loss. Maybe it's time then, you only need one or two of those, maybe it's time then that you reached out to check in and give support, or maybe it's time that you, um, if you see it in yourself, that you reach out to get support. Um, and how do we do that when we want to reach out to give support? Uh, look, from a lot of people, I think, you know, as the modern man and in society, we've become a lot more aware of mental health, our, our knowledge and, and capacity around mental health is. Um, is so much so further than it was maybe uh, a decade ago and every day we're getting better and better at having real open transparent conversations around mental health and acknowledging mental health and normalizing mental health but you know what really stops us sometimes and the real barrier is that we sometimes believe that we'll make the situation worse well I'm here to tell you today you will not okay you will not make the situation worse you will be there to support them. A 30 second conversation can literally change someone's life. So we need to be mindful of that. Here's a few couple of things that you, 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 know, you can keep at the back of your mind about when you're having a conversation or reaching out to someone. You know, stay calm, you know, monitor your tone, you know, be open, open body language, open mind, open sight, um, you know, listen. If someone does reach out to you to, um, for support, you know, sometimes we can be really quick to fix and jump in. You know, it's really important that we give the individual time to contemplate how they're feeling. In some cases, they may never have reached out before. You may never have verbalised how they're feeling. So it takes time for someone to, you know, really um, to really find those words. So you may think there's some awkward silence, but I'm here to tell you the only one who's going to be feeling awkward is you, and it's not about you, it's about the person who's reaching out, the one who's working through a crisis, the one who is becoming unwell, it's about them. So please put your awkwardness away and sit there and be open. Um, uh, timing, time is about giving the person time, but it's also, is it the right time? Do you have enough time? If not, you can transfer the conversation to another time, uh, if it's able to. Um, another one is empathy. Empathy is something really important. Empathy is where you want to understand what the person is going through. Ask them, I want to know how you're feeling. Let me know how you're feeling. Um, empathy is key. And I think we all need to learn empathy. Empathy would make the world a lot brighter and, and sharper place. Another one is don't be dismissive. Guys, we're really great at it, okay? I know how you're feeling. You're going to be all right. I've been there, you're gonna be all right. Um, you know, it's it's where we start to use, you know, our own um, our, our own lived experience. 
um, to what um, they may be going through. Um, you know, don't be judgmental. I know what's wrong with you. You drink too much, Steve, and that's why your relationship's breaking down. When someone's reaching out to you, it's not about um, giving the person um, a, a judgment or a lecture. It's about putting that aside, putting aside your own unconscious bias and, you know, being there for the person, being present for the person. Um, now, you know, it can be something as simple as, Matt, I've noticed that you haven't been yourself lately. Is everything okay? You know, if it's not, I'm always here to support you. There's no rule that you can go. The per more than likely, the person will say, knowing man, will say, look, no, everything's fine. You know, I'm, I'm okay. It's just, you know, work's got on top of me. Hey, it's okay to ask the next question. You know, tell me about work. What's going on? Oh, no, that's all right. That's all right. I'm fine. Just let's drop it. Um, you know, there's no rule that we can't go back for the second time or the third time. Now, I'll ask you one question. What's, what's friendship built on? Well, friendship's built on trust and respect. And if you go back again in an empathetic and real manner and say, hey, Matt, I've noticed that you haven't been yourself lately. I know we had that conversation last week, but I'm worried about you. I'm here to support you, and I, I, I want to be there for you. Is everything okay? Give them that time, and over time they'll understand that you are there for their best interest, you are there for their well-being, and those levels of trust and respect will build. One thing I will say is that we don't have to fix them. That's another thing, that we get really concerned that we don't have all the answers and all the tools to fix someone. We're not there to fix someone. We're there as an individual, as someone who cares and loves someone, is there to support them. Uh, the, the role of the fixing and mending that we talk about is really for the health professional. Our role as someone who cares for an individual who may be coming unwell or be in a crisis is to support them, make sure that they're safe, and then support them to seek professional clinical support. And that leads us on to treatment. Now, there's a wide range of different treatments to suit different disorders, different people, different lifestyles. So there's not a one fix all approach to mental health and there's a lot of different people that you can see first of all you really you know if you do know someone becoming unwell you know try to share with them that they need to speak to other people about it to help support them through um, but a really great place to take them and support with them go with them to is the GP because the GP will start the process of a health, mental health plan and put together um, and put together a referral process um, to either a counsellor, an occupational therapist, a social worker, um, a psychologist, or a psychiatrist. Um, and look, guys, uh, I know we're talking to men, but I know there will be women. But I'm here to tell you today that seeing a health professional about your mental health is no different than going to see. Um, a chiropractor or a physio about a physical health. You might have a bad back or a bad hammy. You go in and see your physio. What your physio does is asks you simple questions. When did it start to hurt? How long has it been hurting for? Um, and other questions along that line. And then your physio will give you tools and exercises to become well again. And that is absolutely no different to the kind of response you're going to get from uh, either a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a counsellor or anyone like that. They are there to support you becoming well and they're there to give you tools to become well again. It's that simple. It's as simple as seeing a chiro or a physio. I don't mean to trivialise it, but it is. And that can be a big barrier for some people. Now, there is a wide range of different treatments that you can do. One that we all know about is the medical treatment path. Um, this is not for everyone, but what's really important that you do is build a relationship with your health professional, with your GP, with your psychologist, with your psychiatrist, with your counsellor, but mostly with your GP or a psychiatrist. If the medical path and the medication path isn't working for you, please reach out and let them know. You know, it's important, it's important for you to have a strong relationship with the person that's treating you because for a lot of cases and, and, and the conversations I have with a man is that they have an experience with a health professional um, and they believe that you know they weren't listening or they weren't getting the right treatment and then they never go back and get treated and the and they become uh, more unwell um, but just like and, I, and once again I don't mean to trivialize it if you were to get from get a bad haircut okay or a haircut that you didn't like um, by your own opinion 
um, you know, you'd go find a new hairdresser. Or if you were seeing a, a physio and you believed, you know, you weren't being treated correctly, you'd go see a new physio or you talk to your physio. It's really important that you have a connection because that is key to becoming well again. Um, you have the psychological treatment, um, uh, and, and which is really uh, uh, fantastic, um, CBT and so on. Um, it's a lot of options there. You have complementary and lifestyle changes as well, um, like mindfulness, as we spoke about before. And if you're working through addiction or other issues, there is some really great group sessions where you can connect with people that are working through the same sort of uh, disorder or, or uh, related issues. Um, but once again, you know, family and friends are key. There are a wide range of support networks that we can um, that we can work with um, and resources we can go to. Lifeline, Suicide Callback Line, Beyond Blue, Men's Health Line, uh, Respect um, uh, Respect One Eight Hundred, which is domestic violence line. Unfortunately, um, with COVID, the, uh, the the financial turndown and and the the drinking that we have seen increase. Um, Domestic violence is increasing, so it's important that we all understand that. It's Kids Helpline, uh, um, 5 to 25, and Q Life as well. Um, but for everyone listening and watching, I really, you know, I have, I have conversations with people, and some people say, Look, my mental health is perfect, I'm fine, I, I don't have any issues. But, you know, our mental health, just as I said at the beginning, lives on a spectrum. We need to look after our mental health um, to make sure that it stays on the right side of the spectrum. And how we do that is through, you know, making sure that we look after it. So now here's a few tips to keep yourself on the good side of the spectrum. Get regular sleep, regular exercise, eat a healthy diet, set yourself achievable goals, keep in touch with family and friends, do what makes you happy. Um, and do what makes you happy is something that I was taught by my mentor and great friend, Liz Wyatt, um, is do not work, but do something that gives you absolute joy. Do something that's a little bit indulgent, a little bit selfish, that you can do and stop and reset your week. And if you do that once a week for an hour or two, um, it can be really, really beneficial um, to starting the next week or being a bit of a coping mechanism to, you know, keeping yourself on the good side of the spectrum. I do it. My wife lets me go surfing um, and, and and go to the gym and things like that. And that's my time. And my wife does yoga and that's her time. Um, understand your limitations. Control your work environment, especially if you're working from home at the moment. Talk. You know, communication is key. Have open conversations. I challenge you to go out and have three conversations with three people today about mental health. Eight times out of ten, they'll come back to you with a positive response about either a lived experience or experience of a friend or family member. Um, seek help if you need it. Know the signs and know that you're not alone. If you ever are in crisis, Lifeline is the most wonderful organisation. They are there 24-7, 300 352 days a year. I think I've got that wrong. But anyway, you know what I mean. I would like to thank you so much for your time today and thank you to Glenn um, and the team uh, for putting on a fantastic week and a fantastic month of um, um, uh, Men's Health Forum events live via the internet. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to be a part of it. So thank you. Great. Thanks, Stephen. You can just stop. There we go. So, mananka.com.au, if you want to find out more about Steve. We've got to time, so we're just going to have to say goodbye. Anthony, any final thoughts from you? I'm not hearing him. His microphone's probably off. Mike's on mute. Mike's on mute. No, no look, uh, Steve, that was fantastic. I was taking photographs of some of that. It's brilliant. And it, we're, the, the, the messages are the same that we're all talking about. And, uh, and it's just communication and talking. Uh, I do a thing, I, I ring seven people a day every day. And I write them down before I get to work, before nine o'clock. And, and it's so great. You actually fit human to human, the voice. That's just mm. speaking to people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and during COVID-19, a lot of it's by email. They're stuck at the house and so forth. So pick up the phone and do the old-fashioned talk to someone. 
Yeah, it doesn't mean that you've connected with someone if you've seen that they bought a new puppy on Facebook. That's not yeah. real connection. Real connection yeah. is talking, asking. Absolutely. So, no, fantastic. And I'll tell you what, you, 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 you've got the Australian of the Year Award from me, Glenn. I can't believe how tiring it is to do these live events. And, uh, like, half hour for us is tiring. You're doing this nine, ten hours a day. Yeah. Better, better get my... You're the second person to offer me that award, though none of you have actually got the authority to give it. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm not yet a citizen, but don't, don't oh. tell... Probably no, okay. one, no one's watching this. Don't tell the immigration department. I, I am a permanent resident, but I'll, I'll wait till I wait to get my citizenship first. That'll be a good. <laughs> <laughs> well thanks, 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 thanks for the acknowledgement. I appreciate it. So you've been watching uh, Blokes uh, TV. My name's uh, just plain old, plain old Glen Pool, not Glen Pool Australian of the Year, as Anthony. <laughs> just Glen Pool, uh, CEO of the Australian Men's Health Forum. Uh, this is Men's Health TV. Uh, we're going off air now, but we'll be back at 2 p.m. with blokes on the couch. We've got three great uh, male therapists talking about working with blokes in the mental health setting. Thanks to Anthony Hart of Lifeback Tracker. Life back, yeah, Lifeback Tracker. And thanks uh, to Steve Gamble of Man Anchor. We'll see you all again. Thank you. In an hour or on another day. Bye-bye. And we're off air. Great work, guys. That was excellent. Both of you. Oh, thank thank you. you. Excellent. Go and get some light. Go and get some lunch now. Yeah, let's do it. Good on you. I'll All see right. you at three. Thank you, three guys. O'clock. Thank you. So nice, Pl- nice pleasure to meet you, Anthony. Really, really good to meet you, Steve. We're definitely going to catch. So, how far are you f- from Sydney, the central? You're north, aren't you? Yeah, I'm. I'm 20 minutes from the city. Oh, great! Excellent. I'm there a fair bit, so I look forward I, to catching up. Definitely. I get to Adelaide look once or twice a, a year. Um, so, uh, you know, but let's, let's yeah. connect by email. Ab- or, absolutely. I will. I took a photograph. Can do that. I've learned heaps from watching your presentation. I need a closing page. There you go. There you go. Good. You go. Okay. See you guys. Thanks. See ya. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Guys. Thanks, Glenn.